Sean Yu is about to join us via video Skype. She's a Ugandan American, and both parents are from Uganda. And her YouTube video is Coney 2012. Video is misleading, has over 3 million views. I thought we'd get her on. We're going to her here in just one moment. And Patrick Henningsen later is going to ride shotgun with uh, her and I. Uh, but it, it's such big news, I thought I would uh, mention it again. Um, Wired's reporting it. Uh, it's direct public statements he made on a stage that the CIA is surveilling the American people through household appliances, smart meters, iPhones, uh, refrigerators, most of the new ones. And they're talking about by law, they're going to have an internet connection that overpower, data over power lines, uh, watching you, listening to you. Uh, even the New York Times is admitting that the smart meters can control all the appliances in your house or pick up data off of them, depending on the system. I mean, it is so incredible. I read his quotes last hour uh, where he just says, we're, we're, I mean, this is just the total end of everything. The TSA sticking their hands down our pants, no personal privacy, no Fourth Amendment. The CIA is operating domestically, totally illegally, just saying, yeah, we're spying on you. Uh, and we're going to launch wars under U.N. order, and uh, America's done. And now they're saying, yeah, if Obama gets reelected, they may just go ahead and ban guns through an executive order. I mean, that, that and the NRA's warning that that's going to happen. I mean, it's, and I used to think they could never move this quick. They'll do it. I mean, th th this is a group of crooks operating out in the open in front of everybody. And they're so over the top that it, it, it flummoxes a lot of people. Even myself, I'm like, I can't believe this. Now, I told you it was coming. Coney 2012, State Department, Hillary Clinton, Samantha Powers. They, I've got documents linked in videos we've done. Uh, the latest one that's got heavy documentation is Secrets. Coney 2012 is desperate to hide. Get it out. And the, what I thought a week and a half ago has been proven correct in spades, in triplicate. In fact, worse than I thought. In fact, I'm actually wrong. I can't say I predicted it because it's worse than I said. It is total propaganda for a boogeyman you can just move around. And they're saying, well, not just Coney. The resolution in the House says anybody that we say is hurting civilians. The West doesn't care about civilians. In fact, State Department Memorandum says they want them dead. Separate Memorandum 200, Henry Kissinger, look it up. It's in our film. The 10-minute the piece, The Secrets of Coney 2012. It is so diabolical. So it's just this, hey, here's the bad man. Here's the bad man at a Sesame Street three-year-old level. They even talk to the adults in the video. Like, who is the bad man? That's the bad man. Now call us and book a screening and, and dance around in front of people. And then you find out it's all White House run, and they have Clooney getting arrested uh, at the Sudanese embassy today. Oh, President, uh, you know, help the people with a humanitarian mission like Libya. Bomb the country, have the Arabs come in and line the black Libyans up and shoot them. 40,000 dead. This is not debated now. We broke it here with people like Dr. Tarpley that went there and risked his life and was in bombardments. Bombs went off, you know, a quarter mile from him. He went through checkpoints, you know, saw tracers shooting by his car. He's the type who doesn't like to talk about it, but I've talked to him privately. I mean, he was there when he would, his phone would be knocked out while he was on the air via cell phone. And it was total carnage. So the new war is launched by a bunch of liberal trendies. No more WMDs. We've got to go to Iraq or Saddam throwing babies out of incubators. Now it's, oh, we're going to save Africa. When the Ugandan president's been connected to all these problems, nobody's seen Coney in years. This young lady has really articulated as a Ugandan what's really going on. And it's not just her. Thousands of Ugandans, Americans uh, who happen to be of you know, Ugandan descent, Ugandans in Uganda, the few that have internet access, they're, they're having showings. In fact, show that London Telegraph article where they show it and the people riot. It's such bull. And then you learn that Bono, who's involved in all this, gives 1% of the money for his African charity, or 1.5, to Africans with strings attached. You learn Bill and Melinda Gates are running scams. You learn this group only gives a little bit of the money. It is so outrageous. So I wanted to bring her up here in the aftermath of her video, just one version getting over 3 million views, to, to go over this. Now, now, the Ugandan government has now halted the 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 screenings because it makes Ugandans so angry. So it's it's not just this young lady who the pro Coney twenty twelve propagandist out there savaged. She put her video out a week ago. She's been proven absolutely right. 
So she joins us. Uh, San Yu, thank you so much uh, for joining us here today. You've got the floor. Tell folks the, uh, the truth of what's happened. And now, in hindsight, uh, the, the uh, video you put out a week ago, what we've learned. Hi. Um, Hi. The video that I actually made was originally for students at my high school. I'm a senior in high school right now. And what they were getting from that Coney 2012 video was that there was a and that we had to stop the war in Uganda and help these Ugandans. And I was like, what? And so I see on Twitter um, when they have the most uh, trending topics, and Uganda was one of them, and then Coney. And in the video, I mainly talk about how this isn't affecting Uganda right now. We're actually moving on from that. We have moved on from that. And I know that a lot of people are like, oh, well, the LRA has moved to other places. But that is not what the video focused on. It focused mainly on Uganda, which really, really upset me because every time that I go and I visit, I go to all different parts. I have a grandmother that lives in the city. I have my other grandmother who lives in the villages. And I get the best of both worlds when I go there. And every single time that I've gone there, I've never, ever had to, like, deal with this Coney drama. Well, a lot of Ugandans have pointed out that he hasn't been seen in close to six years. And, and, and this U.S. resolution just says... Coney, anybody that helps him, or anybody we say is hurting civilians, it gives AFRICOM this excuse just to go into any country at once. Exactly. I, a lot of people don't know about AFRICOM and how it's not only going to affect Uganda, it's going to affect all countries of Africa. And my mom does not have the conversation about Coney with me because she really believes that Coney is dead. Every single time. I'll just be like, Mom, what do you think about the Coney 2012? Uh-uh, Coney is dead. And that's all she says. And if he hasn't been active for that long, and there are reports that Bush bombed his last known location, it kind of makes sense. I mean, the LRA can move and expand and do whatever they do without having Coney in charge. Well, now they're saying it isn't about Coney. They just wanted to draw attention to him, but they're like, first there was Hitler, then there was Bin Laden, now there's Coney. But don't worry, the UN's going to get all these Coney's, and there just so happens to be one in every country where they want to bring in military force, and we've seen what Western military's done in Africa uh, there. What's your view on that? I mean, do you, do you agree with my assessment that this is a pretext? to just start invading African countries, backing up dictators and others? I do believe that. I do know how horrible President Museveni is, and I also do know that he is an ally to the U.S. government. Um, I also believe that the fact that they just discovered a lot of oil in Uganda on the border of the Congo as well is very appealing to the U.S. and how they're not happy with them trading with China. Um, I just feel like the U.S. always has to put their hands on everything. If the Ugandan government and the Sudanese government and others surrounding Kenya, they can all help out. And if they wanted to stop these things, they could stop them on their own. But all these governments are corrupt on their own. And to have America come in and act as the superhero, they can't because our own government isn't even that stable. Well, look at our supposed government. Uh, I mean, anybody that thinks they launched the war in Iraq because Iraq was involved in 9-11 needs their head examined. Anybody that thinks they went into Libya uh, to help people. I mean, I mean, Obama says that was a peace war and that that was a humanitarian action. Uh, and I know that most African countries, and I've seen the polls, uh, n no Africans I know are buying that, uh, that that was actually to help Libya. Exactly. I don't think it was either. And I don't think that... This video that they put up is really bettering Africa in any way. It belittles Africa to me, actually. Why do you think people are rioting all over Uganda when they see this film and demanding it not be shown, even tribes that aren't associated with groups that Kony was in the north, and, and the government's now saying they don't want it shown in the country? I think because... That's a good question. I think the reason why they don't want it shown is also they don't want these outsiders coming in and thinking that they have a really big outlook on Uganda and through other surrounding countries because of this video. That's not it. Like, 
you can't form a relationship with Africa because of this one YouTube video. And I think that that is what's angering, especially for um, a place in the world that has such a little technology interaction and the fact that you have all these people wearing these t-shirts, buying these bracelets. Like, you don't know the roots of Africa. You don't know the history thoroughly of Africa and what has gone on with, like, Idi Amin. You don't know, like what President Museveni is doing, like other problems that they are going through. And I know and you've got family there, so you probably don't want to say too much about him, but we've had experts like Dr. Tarpley, who's researched it and been there. Estimates are that president is connected to groups and organizations and himself in the last 26 years, 7 million dead. And they're talking about Coney, who is like microscopic compared to that. Exactly. And what, what got to me was the fact that Coney had child soldiers after President Museveni did. And so I was like, if you're acting like he's the only man in this world who has done this. And the fact that they advertise him as the world's worst war criminal is just so, it's so humoring to me. Like, I just, I think yeah. it's funny. Yeah, well, it is funny until you realize that these fake liberals prancing around are really war propagandists trying to sell Americans on getting behind new wars. Because Americans do want to help Africa on average, so they have trendies dance around and say, we're going to help Africa. People will get behind it, so it's dangerous. Stay there, Son You Amazing testimony. I want to come back with you and Patrick Hennigs and straight ahead. Son You is a high school student here in America. Both her parents are... Uh, from Uganda, she visits Uganda, has her grandparents there, and uh, the Ugandans everywhere are, are freaking out when they see this Coney 2012. And now the Coney cult people are saying, I don't care what you say. I'm li liberal, I'm trendy, I want military action in Uganda, I want the AFRICOM to invade these countries. Uh, and so, yes, it's funny at one level that it's so ridiculous, but... Uh, it's very dangerous because they'll tell America that we're over there saving people and America will get behind carpet bombing the entire continent. People need to understand this is dangerous. The trendies are about as vicious as it gets and, and they're never going to be told they're wrong. They're going to call for probably napalming the entire continent now just because people are telling them they don't like it. They're like, you don't like it? Here's some napalm, uh, San Yu. Uh, other points you'd like to add joining us from your high school today? Um... Really, it's just, uh, I have gotten, obviously, like, a lot of negative response for these videos, and people are judging me, saying that I don't care about these kids, and I'm like, people need to realize, um, when they're talking about the LRA, they're talking about the children that they want to save, and when there's military intervention, those lives of those child soldiers that have been taken are going to be lost. And I think that a lot of people really need to open their eyes up and realize that. Well, plus, I mean, that's going on in, in, in every culture throughout history. Sometimes there's been pressing of children into service. I'm not saying it's good. It's terrible. Coney, I think, is a bad guy. But, again, you notice they always pick somebody like bin Laden who hadn't been seen in years. It's a perfect boogeyman. Like, he might be under the table. He might be in the closet. He, you know, he might be... Maybe Coney's hiding there at, at, at your high school. <laughs> I actually, like, I just, I don't know. It's just so weird. It's the fact that if he's hiding somewhere, I do not believe that he has enough money to, you know, have a nice house to stay somewhere. Like, he is probably somewhere in a jungle, in, like, a hut or something. Like, I don't think that... People but if but if but if uh, Africom invades all the countries, that'll get him though. It's not going to get him. Of course, I'm being sarcastic. Right. Uh, I mean, and I mean like, it's not. You and got I'm over ninety percent support on one of your videos. It got over three million views. So most people are seeing through this. But what type of hate has been thrown at you by the trendies? Um. Well, obviously, I can tell that they're a bunch of like really young people or. Even the people that are just so, I, my voice really needs to be heard. And through this, it can be heard and I can make a difference in the world. And everyone is just like, um, oh, you know, maybe you should go and find Coney yourself. You're probably Coney's daughter. You're probably part of the LRA, your own self. <laughs> um, let's see. There was some, one that really 
got me, which kind of confused me, was someone was like, you are so ungrateful. Um, our country helps so many savages like you, and just because we want to help out your savage country and save all the savages in that country, you want to get mad. And I think... <laughs> Wow. Wow. Patrick Henningsen, investigative journalist, is in here. You want to comment on this? I don't know. When I hear stuff like this from Sonia, I, it really gets me fired up, Alex, because it's the classical uh, Orientalist view that, that Westerners have been trained over 200 years to look at places like Africa and carrying the white man's burden. We're going to come in and we're going to save the Africans. We're going to save the Afghans. You know, all the liberals who are backing Coney 2012, if you're listening now, just be aware, okay, that the agenda for Uganda and the rest of Africa was signed, sealed, and delivered in 2007 by George Bush Jr., okay? And every liberal hates George Bush Jr., but he... That's why he's endorsing County 2012. Well, he put AFRICOM into motion in, in 2007. AFRICOM, if, if the African Central Command uh, objective is a child of the project of a new American century. It's the stepchild of that. You have CENTCOM in Qatar, you have AFRICOM in Africa, and you have... Uh, these organizations, they sprout out of the... It's a globalist invasion. You've got all the documents. We're going to go over those when we come back from break. Uh, but going back uh, to our guest who's joining us from her high school, you know, I'm really glad that your high school let you do this today, I, and I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, they um, really support what I had to say, and, like, especially my world history teacher and my government teacher and um, even my arts teacher. Everyone has been really supportive at my school, so I'm really grateful. Yeah, so that. you're finding most people there. They're not buying the, the county bowl. They did until I made my video. Well, that's good, though. See, they were, they were well-meaning. <laughs> And then you're there and going, hey, I go to Uganda, uh, people aren't buying this. And then now a week later, you've been proven right. The government's like, don't show this movie anymore. Uh, people really are getting angry. Stay there. We'll do about 10 more minutes with you. Patrick Henningsen's with us. We'll be right back, folks. You're getting what's really happening right now. You are listening to The Alex Jones Show. All right, Son Yu is joining us from her high school. And we'll give her... We won't give you her last name or where she's at for her own uh, privacy. But she had the courage a little over a week ago to say, hey, uh, this whole Coney 12 thing, I've got family there. My parents are from there. I visit. He's not even been an issue for many years. This Something's going on here. And she got overwhelming support, but some st still attacked her. Now, since then, uh, you know, a lot has developed. Our worst fears about this have been proven true. It's a total CIA front invasion force plan. Um, Patrick was just making the point during the break, it's like the last days of Hitler, the Hitler youth. When the propagandists have to start targeting high school kids, you know you're in trouble. I mean, the system is now trying to see if they can get kids hyping war. You know, go to your parents, tell them, call for an invasion, a peace war like Libya. And, and then you find out that's their whole program. This is their new push. They got George Clooney running around, Angelina Jolie. Uh, you know, just in five minutes or so, because I know you've got to get back to class there. Uh, points you'd like to make to the world uh, now, you know, since you originally put that video out. Um, a couple of points that I do have to put out. Um, through that video, some people thought that maybe I wasn't in favor of Coney getting justice. Yes, I do think he's a horrible man. But like I always say, like people really do need to do their own research, not just base it off of this one video that they saw through great editing and effects. Like, I, I don't believe that they needed to exaggerate what they did did in that video and the footage that they used was outdated and um and um i just i just really i just educate people like just educate yourselves and research do your own research maybe you'll find something that i may not know and you can come to me and tell me that very well said i see somebody trying to talk to you is that your teacher yeah well go ahead and talk to your teacher for a moment go ahead <laughs> or, or if you don't need to speak to her, that's okay. Uh, you can leave her up just so I know. Um, she, she, oh, she, no. She left. Okay, great. Uh, well, we just appreciate your courage. Uh, wow. Uh, Patrick, you had this whole presentation ready for this hour, and they happened to book her right during that time, but it, you were already going to come in and, and expose Coney. You've got all the documents there. I mean, this is an open and shut. And it's so creepy to see them now literally going with the 1984 paradigm of war is peace. Yeah, the, the, the Coney issue actually uh, goes right back to 1987, okay? 
This guy's been running around the jungles of Uganda in 1987. Okay, let's let's take a let's take a lot a logical deductive logic sort of view at things. You've got a resistance army hiding in the a guerrilla army hiding in the jungles of Uganda. Okay, this sounds very familiar. We've seen this in Central America. We've seen this in other African countries all over the planet. There is a slight possibility, and I would actually wager money on it, Alex, that uh, the Lord's Resistance Army has links to either the CIA or the MI6 or the Mossad or something like this, okay? It's not out of the realms of possibility. And I know people are going to say, oh, my God, how can you say such a thing? Well, history is my guide. And well, that's actually been flagged now. There are some connections. Yeah, if there's even a remote connection, Alex, you know that the whole thing is absolutely filthy, okay? What, well, they always f finance both sides. What, what, what Mussolini did, he did a deal with Obama, okay, in 2009. He said, well, I'm going to help you fight Muslim extremists in Somalia. Mussolini is the president for life in Uganda. He's more or less a dictator in, in those terms. He said, I'm going to help you fight the Muslim extremists or the Al-Qaeda I'm going to help you fight them in Somalia. And the reward Uganda got for that is $45 million of military equipment, which was delivered in 2010 and 2011. So the deal between the U.S. State Department and the Ugandan dictator has been going on since Obama came into office, okay? Ob Obama is amazing. George Bush could not take the ball over the goal line for AFRICOM. A guy like Bush couldn't do it. Rick Perry couldn't do it. Any of these clowns who've got Obama, because he's a man of color, he is the guy who's going to score the touchdown as far as the AFRICOM objectives goes. And we know the State Department plan, who's running all this, is to cut off resources and kill Africans dead or in a hammer. So it's not just like, oh, they're wanting to run things, they're kicking out some bad guys. They're just projecting on the ICC website, every country's got a phantom boogie guy who hadn't been seen in a long time that they're going to invade, but the resolutions say anybody else we want to kill. I mean, it's just a license to invade. And let me tell you, I'm glad this girl came forward, okay, because she's, she's speaking from a point of real experience and reality. I went to an ICC hearing in London near the Houses of Parliament about a year and a half ago, and they were going after the Sudanese president at the time. So they had a, a big multi-panel debate on the subject. And all the Sudanese there were like, how dare you? How dare you violate our national sovereignty? You don't think that we can bring our own criminals to justice? We don't want a UN or an ICC coming into our... Well, the UN only goes after people that resist them, whether they're good or bad. They go after some guys that are bad, some that are good. They go after anybody that doesn't let them rob their country. It's a question of national sovereignty with the International Criminal Court. That's what it is. Well, exactly. The UN, the, the, that's what this is all about, is selling that the ICC is the final arbiter. And Obama is saying, the Supreme Court justices are saying the ICC is their boss. They're saying they're the boss over our military. This is global government. The kids' toys all say UN force now. It's no more U.S. Army. And and all, all the feel-good people on Facebook and Twitter who are back in Coney 2012, be aware that your country, the United States, is one of the only countries in the world that it didn't sign up to the bogus ICC uh, criminal court in the first place. Because if we did, if the United States did sign up to the ICC, uh, Ronald Reagan would have been in the dock for the uh, uh, mining the, uh, the Nicaraguan harbors, and there's a whole litany of crimes that go. Well, Iraq's a war crime if there ever was one. The end of the list is endless, okay? That's why the United States is not signed up to this global. But then backs it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, England would be on there. France, I mean, uh, Libya is a war crime. It's All of these are classic war crimes, and it's incredible. Son Yu is back. Uh, she's there at high school. Uh, Son Yu, you were trying to finish any other points that you'd like to make uh, before you uh, go. Uh, really, I feel like I've said uh, most of everything that I needed to say, but um, I just do think that people should not try and follow into this trend because it's more than just a trend, um, especially that on their website they tell you just to sign your name and your email and th these people don't know what they're signing into and it's really you're supporting military troops getting sent over to Africa. And for all these peace people are like, no, we don't want more people to die. This this is going to cause more harm than good. 
What do you think about the way they talk to, this is targeting high school and college students, they talk to them like at a Sesame Street level in some of these videos, like the Coney movie screening? People thought I was joking on radio when I went, you know, they're dancing like, ah, ah, oh, send the troops, oh. They actually are doing that, and it's so, it's like a Monty Python skit, but it's war, but they're all dressed in, you know, pink pastels, you know, with a feminine guys going, get Coney, get Coney. I mean, it's a, boy, let me tell you, the globalists are getting desperate here. I mean, this is some sick propaganda. What did you think about that? I mean, uh, I, I don't think Africans, uh, who are you know, on record pretty serious folks, like also the fact that the film looks like it's targeting children and is very mindless. Yeah, it does. I believe it targets children. It reminded me of when I was in elementary school and middle school when they would come in and have you like sell things for them and you would make the money, but you wouldn't really earn the money. It would go to them, so you'd win a little prize. And... This is exactly like the same things that they're doing, except they're making money for, on their own for this. Like, they think they're connecting by giving you $5 off a t-shirt. They came to my cousin's high school, and she was like, yeah, the t-shirts were like $15. And I was like, they're more expensive on the website. But they, they try and make it seem like you're special and that you have all this power when it's really, yeah, you may do, but you don't know how to use it just yet. What do you think of Bono, uh, the, the papers, even the BBC reports, gives about 1.5% of the money? Oh, a fire drill. We better say bye to her. Oh, no, that was, my, that was actually my cell phone. Uh, what, do you make of, uh, what do you make of this whole business of African charities, and it turns out it's a total scam? It, well, it is a total, like 1.5%, you said, that's nothing. A little less than that, yeah. It's, that's nothing. Like how they donate 30%, that's nothing. I looked into like Feed My Starving Children, and they donate 93% of the proceeds, and only seven goes to fundraising and advertising. That's right. Plug, there are groups that give over 90%. Plug them right now. And like, well, I'll, I know for sure that, um... Feed My Starving Children. There are always those food drives where you could just give food cans and they would give them directly to the people. And um, Exactly. It's just, there's so much, there's more than just invisible children and that's what people get through this YouTube video and they blind everything else. And Yeah, it's not just let's just help people with, yeah. with, 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 with dams and water treatment and seeds. That's what really helps folks and shovels or food it's oh let's have an invasion it's liberal you're like no this is a state department run pro-war plan here's the documents shut up you just hate the africans <laughs> yeah that's exactly what they say and think like yeah you can feel good for posting a twitter status but that's not going to change anything and you can donate ten dollars to invisible children and there's a 70 percent chance it's not going to touch those kids you and what does is going to come with strings final question for you i'm sick of uh, angelina jolie always there with the starving kids reaching at her for a photo op i mean that is disgusting and then pushing u.n takeovers wars libya she's been right there as a cheerleader if she wants to say coney needs to be arrested for war crime well Coney Coney's not pulling triggers. He's there as a propagandist. She's just as big or worse than Coney. I say clap her in irons. Mm -mm. I mean, it's a figure of speech, but I mean, do you get my point about these people that push war as peace? I mean, they're warmongers, even if they label it as peace. What's your take on that? Was that directed towards Sanyu? Yes, or? yes, 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 Sanyu, you. Oh. It just... It doesn't sit well with me. Like, people don't get it. Like, you don't, you can't just invade someone else's country and think that everyone is going to be happy about it. And you're going to say you're coming for peace with a big gun in your hand. No. You're going to, you're going to scare innocent people. Innocent people are going to react not in a good way. And like I said, it's just going to, it's going to add up and it's not going to add up well and it's not going to end well. You're right. Well, listen, thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, give folks your YouTube channel or any other ways uh, media can contact you if they want to actually hear what you have to say instead of what the Coney minions are saying. Okay, thanks. Um, you can just look at my YouTube channel. Uh, Sonia said it. Uh, my Coney videos, like the second video right under the first phony Coney video that Invisible Children made. So if you want to find me, you can message me through there and we can talk further. All right, thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you, take care. What an amazing young lady, and, and, and people are waking up.
You're chomping at the bit. You've got the floor, Patrick. <laughs> Look, the, the Coney 2012 uh, campaign, this is the ultimate act of desperation, okay? The, what they're doing is when you have to employ children, when you have to put children as troops on the field, okay? Like the last days of Berlin, right before the Reich fell, the last people out, all the other soldiers had already hightailed it out. They saw the Russians coming in. Who was left? The kids were left. The kids and a few hardcore people hanging deserters, okay? This really sad, sad sort of uh, point when you get to, and uh, for instance, Stalingrad, they're dead, nobody left to run the front line, so they had to get the 13, 14-year-olds up, throw a gun in their hand, and put them. This is not much different than that, Alex. This is, this is looking at our civilization. They, our politicians can no longer sell these bogus proxy wars, these foundation-funded Trojan horses, uh, interventions. Look, all look, with the new system, Alex, okay? The CIA shell company system that worked, you know, in the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s, that's obsolete now. Now they've replaced that with the foundation funded propaganda Trojan horses, NGOs, and these sort of feel good campaigns like this. I'm sure that uh, our friends from the Soros found, found Foundations and the Ford, the National Endowment of Democracy, et cetera, they probably got their hands in the Coney 20. No, we've done the research. They do. State Department, everything. And, you know, I didn't even see that, Alex, and I could just make an educated guess. I can walk into the New World Order casino, and I can lay bets down, and I can, I'm just winning, 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 without even seeing, because you, 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 don't, you, you don't even need to see the, the documentation. I was speaking to Kurt Nemo earlier. We found this, some women's organization in Morocco who's uh, opposing this uh, rape, new rape thing, and they're all going crazy in Morocco over this incident of this woman who committed suicide because she was forced to marry her rapist, okay? Uh, National League of uh, Democratic Women or something like that in Morocco. Sure enough, there's a foundation connection which traces back to America, okay? I didn't even need to see the link. And it's not gonna end up helping women uh, it's just some type of background thing to make folks mad at Muslims. So when they blow up Iran, well, they deserved it. That, the the choke the 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 tear jerking point in the Middle East and Central Asia is is women. Look how they treat their women. And in Africa, it's going to be children. Exactly, and and better than children, Alex. Through the eighties, from the from Live Aid from nineteen eighty four eighty five. Uh, and save the children and all these UNICEF commercials that we've been had a steady diet of for about 30 years. That's the cover for the UN slaughtering everybody. That's that's conditioning, Alex. It's media conditioning of African children. And now we've got two, three generations who are totally indoctrinated into this image of uh, African children. You've got Madonna running down, adopting uh, some baby from black baby from Manila. And really what the UN is, is the new colonial government. Yeah, this is the neo. This is the new neo-colonial government. Why are they so desperate, Alex? You're wondering why are they fa when you have to use kids to fast track a, a foreign intervention policy. There is a reason behind this. The reason they're desperate, Alex. Okay, is because they are 15 years behind China in Africa. While we've been diddling around in the Middle East trying to shore up our geopolitical uh, arc of tension right from uh, Asia, uh, Central Asia right around to Europe. Ukraine, yeah. We, uh, while they've been diddling around, China has been slowly and steadily uh, investing actual money, building infrastructure. They're there with generators and wells and like, oh, you're not shoving a machine gun in my face? You're actually here trying to give me a job? Yeah, what, you know, oh, uh, what, what the U.S. has been doing for the last 40 years is their foreign aid program, okay? The foreign aid... Here's some poison food. Here's some vaccines. Yeah, the foreign aid or food aid, military aid, whatever it is. It's basically, hey, here's, here's, a, here's a billion dollars. Come, come shop in my shop, which is Shop USA, and you can buy whatever you want as long as it's from Shop USA. It's, it's about buying loyalty. So they've been able to buy off Egypt. They've been able to buy off the government of India. They've been able to buy off Israel. They've been all these countries they bought off with foreign aid, which Americans think that it's charity. Um, the average American thinks that you... By the way, they don't really spend in Shop America. You mean global shop. The glo because it's not even coming back to us. A globalist shop. Yeah, well, American... you got to buy it from the company store. The American corporations, yeah. Maybe it's made in, made, made in China or Taiwan, but it's, it's the, the, sh the shop fronts in America. But this is the new colonial system. Now, okay, there's a problem now. The old colonial system, they raped and pillaged Africa for things like diamonds, okay? For things like uh, uh, certain kind of textiles, silk... Uh, whatever uh, agricultural products. Now, the the new colonial, the neo-colonial paradigm, has changed because the needs have changed. Now it's about rare earth minerals and things like uranium and a, a whole list of rare earths, which I can get into. That are yeah, we're going to come back and get into that. And and on the back of it, we're told it's for the children. Mm, mm, yeah.
Pony 2012. I've got a new image T-shirt I want to show you on the uh, on the screen after the break. We for, for a counter propaganda image for Coney 2012. All right, we'll be right back with Patrick Hennig. Send a little bit of overdrive with him, but a jam-packed transmission. And let's be clear, I'm not saying the communist Chinese what they're doing is some wonderful thing, but I've looked at their strategy. They've gone in and bought off the government of Australia and are getting something like 98% of the rare earth minerals that are mined out of uh, Australia are now by the Chinese government-backed corporate interest. Uh, what, over 90%? It's like 91% worldwide the Chinese are getting the rare earth minerals. They're actually trying to compete in a more free market way than what the military industrial complex does here. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Chinese actually, uh, Obama just um, uh, uh, fired off a couple of salvos at the Chinese today or yesterday. Uh, and he's going to use the WTO uh, in order to uh, play the part of the pit bull. So, you know, the U.S. The US used to be an economic power. We used to have a manufacturing base. What we've got left is the service industry. Uh, we've got a bit of media and software. And uh, we've got uh, retail, okay? The retail industry uh, is totally dependent, electronics, everything, and the defense industry on rare earth minerals. But if they're so worried about those, why do they let the Chinese dominate? Again, why did the West give them the Panama Canal? Oh, here, we, we built it, have it. Mm -hmm. Oh, here, we'll put tax incentives to move our companies over there because the globalists are playing us off against each other. Yep, yep, exactly. No, China, is, is, China is very much in the fabric of the New World Order setup as, as we are or as Europe is or as some of these uh, emerging BRICS countries. Go over some of those notes. you got a bunch. Okay. Well, a lot of people don't realize, uh, know much about rare earth minerals. And I'll tell you what, you better learn about rare earth minerals because everything that we enjoy as far as technological advances from your iPod to your cell phone to your laptop to, to electric cars, okay, to solar energy. Solar energy is dependent on lithium batteries. Okay, there is a finite amount of lithium on the planet. The other one we've got is a uh, promethium. That's uh, nuclear batteries. Okay, you know, europium and uh, neo neodium. Okay, these are for guided missiles and a lot of uh, advanced uh, military technology. Lithium, lasers, and things like this. Lithium, uh, uh, galo uh, gad <laughs> gadolinium. Okay, this is a laptop and uh, neodium uh, cell phones. So cobalt and uh, holonium, nuclear rot, nuclear control rods, all these, you know, they're rampant, they're building nuclear power plants like it's going out of style right now. And let me tell you something else, the whole uh, Darfur incident, and this is told to me by a top consultant to the European Union as far as on the energies uh, department, he said there is a peak uranium issue, okay? This is a real peak issue, not like peak oil that people talk about where there's plenty of oil on the planet. Uh, to for to keep consumption for the next 200 years. There's a peak uranium. And where is all the uranium? Sudan, the biggest deposit of untapped uranium. And George Clooney wants to help them. Oh, trendy. That's why the Janjaweed were uh, getting all the uh, uh, black... Again, we get this black issue with Africa. We've got uh, Obama in charge uh, at the helm. The whole AFRICOM thing, it, he's going to take this through the next five years. That's why I believe Africa's to extremely uh, strategic important thing for uh, for America. What do you think of my attack on Angelina Jolie? Obviously, I did it so we get attention. You say arrest Kofi Annan or Ban Ki-moon, it doesn't happen. You say arrest her, that'll bring attention to it. But I think if she wants to say arrest Coney and everybody, well, I think she's arrestable then. Well, you know, people put so much uh, weight and importance in celebrities like Angelina Jolie and George Clooney. And believe me, Alex, some of my, my dearest best friends, they just fall over for George Clooney. Anything he does or any campaign that he endorses, like he's some kind of saint. He's probably a nice guy. He's a very intelligent guy. He's made some damn good films, right? But he's not going to tell me... Uh, the, how I well, listen, I like George Clooney as an actor, but I hate his guts because he is smart. He knows good and well he's a warmongering piece of trash. That's what I'm saying. He's pushing all this while saying he's a saint. That That's even worse than George Bush, who was a demonic goblin, but just was launching wars because he wanted to. Because they're doing it under liberal cover. Okay? Yes, it's disgusting. Yeah, just like Obama's liberal cover, a liberal umbrella, a force field, a, a magic cloak, a liberal magic. I'm liberal. I mean, look, they have people now dress up in pink and green plaid shirts and literally go, ah, ah, war, trendy, ah, 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 ah. All right, uh, Patrick Henningsen here visiting with us. Uh, Congressman Walter Jones is coming up. We talked to him 
today and in the retransmission that streams out to everybody. And some stations carry uh, the fourth hour that's a rebroadcast of the first. We've got uh, Congressman Walter Jones on impeachment of Obama. That's big news. Patrick Hennings, an investigative journalist, joins us. You've got the floor in the last few minutes we've got here to break down your investigation of this huge AFRICOM invasion. I, I wrote an article uh, April 13th, 2011, okay, uh, for 21st Century Wire. And uh, it was called The New Cold War in Libya. And it was about the Chinese investments in Libya and how Chinese took a major hit with the uh, no-fly zone and the bombing of Libya. Okay, China is everywhere in Africa. They're in Angola. They're in Zambia. They're in Sudan. They're in Tanzania. They're in, uh, what's the other one, Mozambique. They're big in South Africa. They have been for the last 20 years. Okay, China's got a major foothold all over Africa. Okay, uh, AFRICOM has in its documents, and uh, I link to this on previous articles, it says specifically, what, and AFRICOM is a bit of a trick as well, Alex. They say that the People's Republic Army of China might be deployed to uh, deal with things in Africa, and that's why they set up AFRICOM so the Chinese wouldn't put troops uh, in the African countries. Now, I would wager to bet that China has no interest in military putting boots on the ground in Africa. China doesn't do their business like that. Look at China's record in Africa. They're into building, investing, creating economies of scale. They put a port in Angola uh, that... That country's been raped and pillaged by De Beers and all these corporations for over 100 years. Uh, they, have, they have now a state-of-the-art modern uh, seaport in Angola. But again, what's the schizophrenia here? Because the Chinese leadership is really wicked and works with the globalists, even reducing their own population. They do, it's like a weird double game. Because, I mean, you know, the West is saying get ready for war with China. But then on the other side of that, uh, they're investing with the Chinese. It's really weird. Ch China, China's just securing its uh, own. Look at China as a corporation, the People's Republic Incorporated. Okay, They're securing their uh, raw materials interests, their rare earth interests, and others. The Chinese, you know, good things take a long time to grow. Yeah. It's more of a long term view. Yeah. You know, if you, you, know, you read the I Ching, which every, every Chinese emperor uh, had, had to have next to him since the. The, 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 the Wei, King Wei dynasty, 5,000 years ago, okay? It's all about long-term plans. It's about thinking ahead. It's about the actions that you do today. What sort of uh, plants will they reap? What flowers will they sow in the future? That's Chinese philosophy, okay? Japanese is very similar. They do everything in five- and ten-year blocks. We do everything on quarterly reports, which is three months, you know, uh, six months, 12 months. That's how our corporate culture has uh, become... Uh, that sort of habit, but the, you know the thing I uh, the really kills me about Coney 2012, Alex. Okay, the, they put a December deadline in it, and notice the word 2012. Okay, this is very significant because what they've done is the end of the Mayan calendar. And this might s sound to some people like uh, a load of bull, but let me tell you, liberals and hippies and people who are into New Age religions are really into this end of the Mayan calendar thing, and the deadline for the Coney. Uh, result that they want to see happen in Uganda is about the same time as the Mayan calendar says that time and everything will end on Earth. Okay, so it's it's, it's tied to Obama. It's like a campaign slogan. So a liberal hippie, hip, a liberal hippie loving for military intervention in Uganda. Okay, so now they've completely lost the plot. Okay, this is beyond crystals and tarot cards and uh, 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 seances and Ouija boards. Okay, this is really getting into the heart. They've, this is where New Age culture is really invading into our, our, our lives, okay? Our political realities, our social realities, using Facebook and Twitter to share, share, share. Let's everybody share, share, share. Click, click, share, share, click, click. This is, the, this is our... And they're like, come on, pass it on, get behind it, help. Northcom wants to love us. Facebook and Twitter has been used in the Arab Spring to create a more of a significance than was actually there. And in Russia, they tried the same thing with the uh, last presidential election two weeks ago. They tried to make a big social network sort of presence there. You know what? It's a virtual uh, presence. It's not real. The, the exit polls for Putin were around the same as the votes that were tallied for him. So that means that there was hardly any... All right, Patrick, great job. We'll cover it more on the nightly news. Thank you so much. You don't need me to tell you that humanity is in a deep crisis. Everyone can feel it. We know a tectonic struggle is now taking place between the forces of freedom and those who love darkness, bondage, and enslavement. 
Yes, my friends, evil is rising. But take heart, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Recently, New World Order operative Hillary Clinton admitted they're losing the info war. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. The globalists are scared. They've overreached. The future of the info war is in your hands. Join PrisonPlanet.tv. Download the thousands of special video reports, ebooks, and more, and get them out to everyone you know. Continue to spread the word about the broadcast on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and every other globalist propaganda platform. We are going to use their system against them. The info war now goes into high gear.